This video is sponsored by Mel Chemistry, an amazing and awesome monthly subscription with fun, educational, and safe experiments for kids and parents to do at home. It comes with everything you need to get started, plus 90 experiments on over 30 chemistry topics delivered right to your door. Click the link below to get 25% off your first month and stay tuned for your chance to win a free subscription at the end of the video. Modern life is frequently defined by time and so often by the lack of it. But how is it measured? While well, today complex and intricate devices are used to define and measure it, in the past, more simple ways were used to track the day and measure durations. At this point, I've collected a few different materials that can be used to make these primitive timekeeping devices. So in today's video, I'm dividing the task between several of us to each create a unique timekeeping device. And then we'll put them to the test and see which one is most accurate. My name is Andy and this is how to make everything. Time is an important part of everyone's life, but how do we figure out how to measure it? Earlier this year, I touched on the complexities of measuring time in terms of a calendar year, the complexities of solar, lunar, and day cycles. However, keeping track of the hours of the day is a little bit easier, as it's based solely on the cycle of one rotation of the Earth. In fact, it's possible to roughly tell the time just by looking at the position of the sun during the day, or even using the stars at night. But how do we go from approximating the time from the sun to more accurate measurements? Well, let's look at a few different ways. First up, the iconic hourglass. It measures time by the slow flow of grains of sand through a narrow funnel from one side to the other. Back here with Todd Glassblower, who previously helped us with trying to glass blow obsidian. Today, we're gonna to try and make an hourglass. What do you think the process is gonna be for that? The key is to get a constriction in the middle, and that constriction hopefully is the, the right diameter to allow sand to fall through at the, at the right pace. So it's, uh, again, it's a difficult form. There's a thin line between getting the right size diameter and completely closing it off. And if I completely close it off, then we just have to start all over. So we'll try a few. We'll see what happens. glass bodies and kneel in the kiln overnight, 
to check out the next method of timekeeping, which was likely the first method ever used, the sundial. Hey, my name is Reed Wilkerson, RFW Co. I've done a couple videos with how to make everything, and now they've asked me to make a sundial. You may remember about a year and a half ago, I did a video with them on how to make a telescope, and I actually found some of the wood that we used from that telescope, dimensioned it all up and made a panel, and now I'm gonna get a straight edge, put the template on there, and uh, try and do it in good time. All right, so now I'm gonna put some spray adhesive on the template, let it get a little tacky. Now that we have a nice straight line on there, that can line up the straight line on the bottom here that we got over at the table stop. We can roll it on there. A lot of good chemical smells in here. <laughs> to get the shadow to be mostly accurate throughout the year, the shape of the shadow casting no man needs to be in the same angle as your latitude in the world. Conveniently, we're about a stone's throw from the 45th parallel, so it's a simple 45 degree cut for ours. Want to build your own timekeeping device using chemistry? Check out Melt Science's iodine clock experiment. The iodine reacts to acid right in the beaker and changes color every three seconds over the course of five minutes. You can set your watch to it. See all their available experiments and get your 25% discount at the link below. Next up, a water clock. One of the earliest timekeeping methods used since the Babylonians for keeping track of time after the sun had set. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Sam and I'm gonna be making a water clock. Essentially what I'm gonna be doing is molding a shape out of clay, have it be something like this, and then lining it with beeswax so that it's waterproof. And the design I have so far, it's basically a overstated hourglass that's just water instead of sand. And so, I have finished the sculpting portion of my water clock, an ode to Dobby. All that's left now is to let it dry for about a week, and then after that, fire it, coat the inside with beeswax so it's waterproof, then hopefully I'll have a water clock. I left this cooking overnight, and hopefully now it should be done. Let's just hope it didn't craze or crack, but it looks like it's doing great. Now we have a finished cat-inspired water clock. All that's left to do is to line the inside with this beeswax I'm heating up to make it waterproof, and we'll be able to tell the time. God, the grip does suck. So now that the wax is heated up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it down into the water clock bowl, spread it around, make sure it gets all the insides, makes it waterproof. Oh God, you can see it pee a little bit at the bottom. It really looks like pee. Oh, that's so funny, okay. And then with a needle, we're gonna poke the underside of it so that there's a clear passageway for the water to go through. If you didn't think this would work, well, neither did I. I designed this to have a very small, small hole so that it leaks water very slowly over time so that the clock has a longer duration. We'll just let this cool down and then we'll see if it really works. Piddle, 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 piddle. It's not piddling. <laughs> this is the saddest day of my life. I poked a lot of tiny holes in his hole with a needle and a hammer. 
I kind of broke it a little bit because I chopped through, but it works. It was a noble sacrifice. So now all we have to do is see how much time it takes for all the water in the bowl to pass through the other end. There we go. So it looks like this clock has about an hour and 15 minutes in it because that's how long it took for the water to come out. And I think that's all the time we need. And last we have a candle clock. We're rolling. Do I have to like introduce myself? Hi, my name is Annalise and I am going to be making the candle clock. To do this, I'm using some of the leftover beeswax from the time Andy made candles. And I'll be making them into my own candles that are eight inches long by half inch wide. We'll put a little bit of wax in the bottom of these stoppers. We'll set the wick in like that and then pour the beeswax into the mold and it should be good to go. And once they're cool, I can pop them out burn one and time how far down it burns in 10 minutes. Take that measurement and increment it down the candle six times and that should give me a candle that burns for 60 minutes or an hour. It almost looks like honey. Honey is the only thing that never rots. Put the wick through, dip it into the wax. Dip it in, make it cold. Come on. Okay, unmold me. A big thing with candles is trying to keep the wick in the center as you pour. I'm gonna to try to do like a corner of this tape. Nudge it into the right spot. Ugh. My hands are too small for these beakers. There's one. My wax paper, so getting this out is gonna be funny. Okay, last one, top. I'll use a little more tape to just nudge that wick back in the middle where I want it. Okay, now we let them set. I don't know how long that will take. So these are my candle molds. I'm going to pop these off their bases. Didn't think ahead very well, and I didn't grease these or use any wax paper, so to demold them, I'm gonna have to cut the pipe in half and then in half on the other side. Gross. Where's the puffer? Okay. And now we'll try this side. Why don't you just rip my candle in half? I have to reform them. Hey, hey! Hey! Yeah. So I got it out. It's uh, mostly even and mostly cylindrical. It'll burn and it's made of wax. It's a candle. All right, so I've unmolded all of my candles. Burnt test the one, that was the time lapse. And I measured it on this stick. So this was the height it was at, which is eight inches. And then it burnt down to there. So I do an inch every 10 minutes. I'll need 60 minutes for an hour, which I should have because between these two, I have 16 inches of candle. So I should be good. Now back to finishing up my hourglass and getting the sand inside. Thanks to the help of Todd, we were able to produce a few different size hourglasses and they each kind of have a different volume and a different size opening gap in it. Which is gonna be the real determining factor of the speed at which these run. So I did a few test runs and I can already tell that any larger grains of sand will clog some of the holes that are narrower. So I went through the sand with a variety of different strainers and separated it. So we have consistent sizes of different grains of sand and each should, in theory, run at a different speed through the actual hourglass or it'll clog it. I could probably make sandpaper with this now, with just some glue and paper. So I'll try out all the different grains in the different containers and see what kind of durations I'm able to get with the different options. Let's try it out. So I'm gonna try the largest grain in here and see, see how long it lasts. Too big. Start. 13 seconds. Try a bigger one. It's much more promising. I'm gonna time it out and see how long of duration I can get with this guy. And then I'll adjust the amount of sand from there to the desired length. Once I had the sand calibrated, next I just needed a frame for it. I don't like sand, it's coarse and it gets everywhere. Got the sand all figured out for the hourglass. Now I just gotta put everything together. First I'm going to put a little bit of a flaxseed oil finish on it and then glue it all together.
I just got let dry. Then last of all, for control, we had Joey test his internal clock by going into a deprivation chamber and coming out only when he felt like one hour had passed with no outside reference. What you're seeing here is a thousand pounds of Epsom salt saturated in approximately 94 degree water to match your skin temperature to make sure it's skin receptor neutral. No lights, no sound when you're in there. When we hear sensory deprivation, we're actually speaking of the external stimuli. We're trying to shut down the external stimuli. That allows your brain to fire in different areas and hopefully get you into more of a restful, imaginative theta state. Hopefully you'll experience nothing in there, but we can't tell what's going to happen when you come out and what you experience in here. This is kind of my mission to help people heal, grow, and really contribute to the world. Our therapies that we offer are float tanks, infrared saunas. The other thing that we offer is massage and body work. As far as your experience and perception of time, if you can truly get relaxed in the tank, you will lose the concept of time. So Joey, you ready to float? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> so actually you'll strip down. We don't like anything in the tank. That includes dyes, colors, and all of that. So you'll actually completely strip down to nothing. Uh, after you do that, you'll put these earplugs in your ears. Hopefully that will seal completely and you'll have a float without any Epsom salts in your ears. Thank you so much, Chris. Now, with each of our timekeeping devices built and calibrated, let's put them to the test. So we all went off to an isolated location, start our devices at the same time, and plan to meet back in exactly one hour, according to each of our methods. Let's find out which one is most accurate. I'll see you in what I think is 60 minutes. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Joey. A couple of minutes late. With our primitive clocks, we were actually fairly accurate within a few minutes of an hour. We got pretty close. Except, uh, where's Reed? The odd thing is, like, even when we have actual clocks, this is about as accurate people are to actually showing up, with Reed not even showing up at all. This is just our first step in the timekeeping series, and next up we'll uh, try to make some actual clocks. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh, I'm so trying so hard. Look, 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 the water. No. For you. Stop it, drink the water. You can lead a cat to a water clock, but you can't make a drink. <laughs> uh. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who make this series possible, especially our ones at $15 or above. You get your name on the board behind me. And I just made my 10 second timer, so let's put that to the test, see if I can say everybody's first name in 10 seconds. Andre Antonio, Avijna, Brett, Carissa, Daniel, Dylan, Jason, Jason, Jenny, Liz, Matt, Quentin, Remy, Sandy, Skyler, Steven, Stefan, Steven, Stian, Susan, Taylor, Tim. Andre Antonio, Avishna, Brett, Carissa, Daniel, Dylan, Jason, Jason, Jenny, Liz, Matt, Quentin, Remy, Sandy, Skyler, Stefan, Steven, Stian, Susan, Taylor, Tim. I guess I need some more supporters because I got extra time on the clock. And then for our $75 patrons, Sam made a little water clock just for you guys. You'll be getting that in the mail soon. Thanks again to Mel Science for sponsoring this video. Here are the winners for our last drawing we did. Send us your email and we'll hook you up with your free six month subscription. Now here's your next chance to win your own free six month subscription to Mel Chemistry. Just answer this question in the comments. What is another word for a chemical that doesn't react to other elements? In a couple weeks, we'll do a random drawing to select three lucky winners. If you are too eager and can't wait to see if you won, click on the link below to get 25% off your first month subscription to Mel Chemistry. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. 
Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.